If you watched the first video I did on this Corvette, why well, I give you some of the details, but in case you didn't, I just bought this car a month or two ago and haven't done anything to it yet. But the backstory is um, the fellow that I bought it from bought it in 1992, had a blown engine. In 2006, he did a bunch of work to it. Um, starting in 2006, around 2008, all the work was done, has a new engine, transmission, paint job, suspension rebuilt, and he drove it for less than 10 miles, he says, and then one of his workers pulled the dash out to repaint it, and it never ran since. He thinks that it didn't get wired up correctly, why they never fixed it or got it going again, I don't know, but it sat in his warehouse until now. So I'm going to see if I can get it running and uh, check it all out. First thing i got to do is put another battery in it. And all this heater hose stuff's in the way here. I can't believe this is factory here. I don't know what's going on with that business. Let's see if I can get this out. Kind of hid down in here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just see what works or if anything works. I've got the battery cables just kind of pushed onto the battery. They're snug, but I didn't tighten the bolts down in case something starts smoking in here. I want to be able to run out there and disconnect the battery real quick. So let's just see. I'm going to turn the key on. Oh, I noticed the little brake light comes on, although the brake handle is all the way in. In fact, it doesn't feel like there's a cable hooked up to it. It's just loose. Okay, so got some work to do there. Uh, let's see, horn. No honking. Turn signals. Oh. Well, that's blinking. Right side too. Let's go out and see if they're actually blinking out on the car. Turn signals are working. Let's see about the lights. Yeah, they came on too. Oh, that's the brights. All four of them work. Well, at least some of the stuff is working. Let's see, here's the wipers. There's no wiper blades, but I can see the little, little mouse right there. Let me turn them on. Yeah. Two speed. They're slow. There's high. All right. Wipers seem to work. Let's see. This is the, to close the headlight doors, I think. I can hear something out there, but they're not moving. So those need a little work. Um, let's see, this panel's loose, but it says antenna up down. I can hear it. Let's take a look back there. It's power antenna. Oh yeah. That works. Let's see if we can figure out this radio. Volume on. There we go. And headlights. <laughs> They've got lots of headlights. Get the right parts at the right prices. eBay Motors. Let's ride. Are you tired of being tracked online? There's a simple solution. Okay, it works. Speakers don't sound so great. I got a feeling that'll be getting replaced. Oops. That'll be getting replaced anyway. I'm already tearing it up. Okay. Hey, it's light right there. That's pretty good. Now, I'm not going to turn it over very much if it tries to turn over. 
um, because I want to get some oil pressure built up in that engine first, but I'm just going to see if it'll try to crank. Nope, nothing there. Well, it's trying to go. I think some stuff needs to be cleaned up and maybe lubricated in there. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do now, pull this ignition switch, drop it out of here, see if all the connections are made properly on it. Maybe that's maybe that's all that the problem is. Another thing I want to check real fast before I get too far is the fuse panel. Fuse block is right there. And it looks like Yeah, looks like all the fuses are good. In order to get the cylinder keys out, you turn it all the way to the left in the accessory position. And then take something that'll stick in there. There's a little button you'll feel. Push in. And then you're supposed to be able to... Turn it a little bit more. There we go, and it'll come out. All right, got them all nice and clean now. So we'll go see how it does. What I'm gonna do is put a little contact cleaner up, up in here and try and clean these off. I think what I'm going to do before I go any farther, before I put that switch in and try and see if it'll turn over, I don't really want to turn it over until I've got oil up on the bearings since it's been setting so long. So I've got this little distributor. You can see all the teeth are ground off of the drive there. And I've got a handle up here, so I'll stick this down in there. This little key will make contact with the shaft coming up from the oil pump and then I'll just rotate it like this by hand until I build up oil pressure. Okay, now I'm engaged with the shaft coming up from the oil pump. So I just rotate this Rotates real easy. Once it builds up to some oil pressure, it'll start getting stiff. All right, it's getting tight right there. So it's got oil pressure. I'll just keep cranking and forcing that oil out onto the bearings, up into the lifters, everywhere that it's supposed to get oil. It's pushing that oil right out there right now. Okay, that's all back together now, so let's go back inside. All right, what I'm going to do now is turn this key over to the start position, and I'm going to check to see if there's any power to this wire that goes to the solenoid. Okay, let's try that. Yeah. See the light coming on there? When I turn this switch, I've got the car up on the lift now. What I've done, since I'm out here working by myself, um, I've got some leads connected to the solenoid wire on the starter and another one to the ground. And I've got my little test light right there. So now I'm gonna go up in the inside the car and turn the switch to the start position. And then I can come back and look at this little video and see if the light's coming on or not. I know I've got power coming out of the switch, so if the power's not getting down here, then I know it's a problem in the wire that comes from that switch to down here. If I've got power down here, 
then I'm guessing it must be the solenoid, but the starter and solenoid look like brand new, so I suspect it's in that wire. That should be on, off, on, off. See that purple wire right there with that connection on it? That's the wire that goes out to that solenoid. All right, I looked at a wiring diagram, but what I did find out here is this purple wire, this one is coming from the, the ignition switch inside the car. The other side of this goes over to the solenoid. Those weren't plugged in, I just now plugged them in. One of them was connected to this wire here, and the other one was connected to this wire here. So what I've done, and I had power out to this wire, so I just connected this one to the solenoid wire, and I'm gonna go turn the starter on and see if it'll turn over. Okay, it does turn over. So I'm gonna get some gas and we'll see if it'll start. All right, I've got this little, an old sock tied on the end of this stick. Stick's even got a nice little bow in it, so it'll let me kind of get around there maybe. All right, look down there now, it looks pretty good. I can't get under that float too good. But otherwise, it doesn't look too bad in there. One more thing I want to check before I see if it'll fire up. I want to see if I've got power to the coil. I've got the ignition switch on right now. Yep. I don't know if you can see the light coming on there or not, but okay, that's good. Put gas right down the carb here. What I'm doing now is pouring a little gas right down the gas line to the fuel pump. And maybe that'll prime it. Let's try it again. The car sets up way too high. You see how much gap there is between the fender well and the top of the tire? So what I'm gonna do is pull those front coil springs off and cut one coil uh, off of there and see if I can get that to sit a little lower and look a little better. All right, I've got both ball joints, upper and lower, loose. So now I can just lower my floor jack down, lower that bottom A-arm, and pull that spring out. What I'm going to do now is cut one coil off. I'm going to come right through here, trim it right there. 
That'll take right at an inch off of it. And that should lower it about two inches out at the body, which should be about right. All right, so exactly one coil cut off there. Now I'll take and kind of chamfer this edge here just a little bit. And here it is back together now with the spring that has the one inch cut off of it, one coil. And I fought that spring for a while before I finally resorted to checking YouTube out and I found a video of a little trick on how to get them up in there without fighting them too much. So as I go to the other side to put that spring on, I'm gonna show you that little trick. All right, I've got the other side disassembled, ready to put the spring in there. And what I learned is if you'll take a piece of threaded rod and come down through the upper shock mount right here, and then grab a hold of a little hook like this. Now this is off of my, um, spring compressor that I have. That'll go on the bottom of that rod with a nut on it. And then you can just crank down on this upper nut and it'll compress the spring enough to where you can bring this lower A-arm up in contact with it. You need to make sure that the tang on the end of the spring is indexed properly. It kind of comes right around to this port here. You can see a little indentation in there. I just set the spring in there loosely. Come up here and run my threaded rod right down through the center of it. All right, I've got my little hook in place. Now I'll start tightening down on this nut and compressing that spring. All right, I've got it partially compressed and as I'm bringing the spring up with this threaded rod back here I'm bringing my floor jack up against the lower a arm uh, just to kind of follow it up and then when I get up where I think I'm high enough I'll give this a little kick and knock it back in there it's all back together now got my new wheels and tires on there got it all cleaned up looks pretty good I cut those little mud flaps off of the back end there still waiting for my repair panels to get rid of those fender flares got it lowered down just a little bit side windows roll up and down nice got the door lock fixed got the horn fixed everything seems to be working got the headlight doors opening and closing nicely now they were stuck the only thing still not working is the gas gauge. Cleaned up the best I could under the hood here.